All right, we have a couple of orders of business. First of all, many of you are here for uh, the celebration of the life of Carol Rogers. And even if you're a member, you're probably still here wanting to celebrate this man's life. He was 107 years old. And not only was he 107 years old, but he was really a man not just of, of, uh, of Tryon, but of all of Western North Carolina, and he was a man deeply rooted in the Episcopal Church. He was a man in many ways uh, that, uh, that defied, uh, um, defied death for a long time. But in our homily today, I want you to hear what is being said because I believe that what the homily is pointing to was very much lived out by Carol Rogers. I want you to hear this kind of, these twin poles of shrewdness and faithfulness. And when you hear this, I want you then, when we go back and we do the remembrances, to realize in many ways that Carol Rogers was living kind of with the balance of these two virtues that Jesus is going to talk about today. Shrewdness and faithfulness. Now, sometimes putting together shrewdness and faithfulness is not easy. Sometimes it can be overwhelming to be shrewd and also faithful, to live a life that is in accord with God, but yet is also shrewd and not naive. Now, in my own life, I found it very hard as well to be both shrewd and faithful. Yesterday, when I was hearing uh, Carl Rogers' uh, son, uh, William, talk about it, he talked about his dad being able to make a motorcycle out of a used washing machine. And that, indeed, is shrewd, unlike me. When I had just graduated from college, I, I was living in New York uh, and working with my uncle. And he was in the car parts business. He knew everything about foreign car parts. And right next to his house, about three, three houses down, there was an old 1960s vintage Carmen Ghia. But it had a brand new paint job. And it was like a, a nice, beautiful, matte, light blue. And it was the most beautiful looking car. There was no glass broken. There was no chips of paint. It was the most gorgeous, beautiful car anyone could imagine. And finally, one day, I got enough gumption up to go and knock on the guy's door and ask him about the car. And he said, oh, this is the most wonderful car. I've had so many wonderful day trips in this car. It's just a lovely car. Here, why don't you sit in the car? And there were, there were beautiful, beautiful leather seats that were just worn just enough. And everything was beautiful about this car. And, and I was just about to buy this car. And I said, you know, I, I, I think I'm going to talk to my uncle before, but I really want to buy this car. It's such a beautiful car. The inside of it smells just beautiful, just like, just, it's amazing. And, uh, and I go down to my uncle, and, and I go, hey, Uncle Mike, uh, should I buy this car? I think I'm going to buy this Carmen Ghia. And, and he says, no, nah, I don't think so. I said, well, what do you mean? It's the most beautiful car I've ever seen. He says, let me tell you, we're taking it to my friend Sven, the European mechanic, and we're going to see what's underneath that hood. And so we take it down to, see, to Sven, and he takes a look at it, and he comes out and he tells you, hey, look, I understand. It's the most beautiful paint job anybody's ever seen on the most beautiful car, but let me tell you, that thing is just rusty bolts and haywire, and if you want that, that is going to be the biggest headache of your life. But there I was, still looking at it, and I was thinking to myself, I want this car. No car has ever called out my name like this. No <laughs> car has ever called out my name like this. But I also knew that it wouldn't be shrewd to buy this car, that this car was really just a mirage. It wasn't really what I thought it was. And even though I knew it wasn't what it actually purported to be, I kind of still wanted it, too, because I had this vision of myself looking like James Dean and smoking a <laughs> cigarette and squinting my eyes. But my uncle said, 
that wouldn't be shrewd. You're going to lose all your money, and you ain't going to be able to get anywhere because that car's going to die as soon as you buy it from that person. Now, in our reading in the gospel today, we come across a similar situation. Jesus is teaching these, his disciples. Now, it says, it starts off, he's talking to his disciples, and he says, look, i got a story for you all, okay? There's this man, and, he, he, and he's managing the, the property of this other man who's got lots of money. And then the man who, who, who owns all of this property, it's brought to his attention that the man who manages his property is being profligate and isn't doing a good job in managing his money and managing his affairs. And he says to the guy, I need an accounting of what you're doing because I'm going to fire you and I need to see what you've been doing. And so the guy who's the manager gets all anxious and worried and he's all upset and he says, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm too weak to dig, and, and, and I'm too ashamed to beg. I, there's nothing I can do. What am I going to do? And he says, I know what I'm going to do. I might have been a lousy manager of this guy's property, but now I'll embezzle it. So he calls in all the debtors, and he says to the first debtor, how much do you owe? How much do you owe? And he says, I owe 100 jugs of olive oil. He says, great, make it 50. He calls the second person in, and he says, how much do you owe? How much do you owe? He says, I owe 100 cores of wheat. And he says, great, make it 80. He says, I know if I do this, these people that I'm cutting a deal with will at least let me lay my head down in their house and, and maybe have a hot meal or two with them. And at this point, you're thinking to yourself, man, the master's going to be furious with them. Not only is he going to kick them out and fire them from his job, but he's going to send Peter Franklin after him to recover all the assets. <laughs> But it doesn't turn out like that. It turns out the master says, he commends the ma manager for being shrewd, for coming up with a plan to get himself out of this. Now at this point in time, we're thinking to ourselves, this doesn't make any sense. How can Jesus be praising a guy who not only is bad at, at the affairs of this guy, but also is an embezzler? How can this be? What the heck is going on? And finally, Jesus says, look, the children of this world are much more shrewd than the children of the light in dealing with the affairs of the day. And he's talking to the disciples here. He's not talking to the Pharisees right now. And he says, look, you all got to get your stuff together because right now you are marks, you are rubes, and you are naive, and you will be taken for everything you have. And if you're going to do my ministry, you're going to have to be more than a mark and a rube and naive. You're going to have to be able to tell what's right and what's really of God and what's not right and not really of God. So you better get your act together. Or all of those people of the world, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, the high priests, the Romans, the Greeks, and all those people, they're all going to sell you down the river if you're not careful. And look, we're going to Jerusalem. And when we go to Jerusalem, I need you to know what's what. Because if you listen to the voice of the Pharisees and the high priests, they'll tell you it's not worth it to go to the cross. It's not worth it to suffer. It's not worth it to be faithful. So you better listen up, and you better get a little wisdom and shrewdness on you. Because if you don't, you don't you're not going to know which way is up and which way is down. Now, beginning in verse 9 through 15, Jesus is saying, okay, we heard the parable about being shrewd, and it didn't look anything like we expected faithfulness to look like. But I was talking about shrewdness, and now I'm going to talk about faithfulness and what faithfulness looks like. And he says, you know what? Yes, you need to be shrewd, but you also need to be faithful. And what does faithfulness look like? Well, he says... Look, if you are not faithful in a little, you're not going to be faithful in a lot. And if you're not faithful in what somebody else has, you can't be faithful in what is your own. And why would anybody give you something if you can't be faithful with what somebody else has? 
and with a little. In other words, you got to be shrewd, you disciples, but you also have to be faithful. You have to be able to balance these two things together because one without the other is not enough. You have to have both. And he says at the end, he says, you cannot serve two masters. You can only serve one master. And he says, finally, you can only serve God or mammon, yet can't serve both. And that word mammon does not just mean money, and it does not just mean wealth. It means all the things of the world that stick to you. You can either serve the world and all the stuff that sticks to you, or you can serve God, but you can't do both. And you're going to have to be shrewd to know which is which. Your heart is going to have to be shrewd and faithful. Because if there's just one or the other, you're not going to be able to do what you need to do. See, Jesus knew this. The world is kind of like a big, finely painted Carmen Ghia. It's beautiful on the outside. It purports to be one thing. And then when you open the hood, there it is, a busted old engine with 350,000 miles that won't go anywhere. You see, Jesus says, that's kind of what the Pharisees are selling you. A, a neatly painted Carmen Ghia with, with nothing under the hood. So you better be shrewd and you better be wise or you're going to be sold down the river and you're not going to know how to be faithful. Now, the good news is that Jesus gives us a way. And that way is to come together every single Sunday to open our hearts to be both shrewd and wise to the wiles of the world. Now, what we also came here to do today was to celebrate the life of Carol Rogers. And if you knew Carol Rogers, you knew two things. Nobody ever sold him down the river. He was always shrewd in what he was doing. And he always knew where his heart was directed. And that was to God, to his family, to his country, to Western North Carolina, and perhaps to a little feldspar. And the reality was this. He knew that he was never going to be sold out. He was never going to be sold short. And he was never going to be left without being faithful. And today we celebrate this man's life, not only because he was shrewd, and not only because he was faithful, but because he was ours here at Holy Cross. And because for 107 years, the man taught others what it meant to be shrewd and faithful, what it meant to be wise and generous, and yet also to live one's life with dignity and respect. And today, today we give thanks. Those hymns that we're singing, those are his hymns. Those flowers up there, those are his flowers. And when we go down into the parish hall, we're going to be giving thanks to Carol Rogers because he showed us what it meant to be shrewd and faithful, what it meant to truly follow Jesus and to know that we weren't being sold down the river, that we weren't rubes and we weren't marks and we weren't naive. And today... We're going to wipe away those tears, those tears that come with loss, and we're going to celebrate his life and give thanks, thanks that we had a man here at Holy Cross who showed us what it meant to truly follow Jesus. Amen.